trucks in the Sydney CBD have been... The EPA examined supply chains and worked out multiple suppliers might have been distributing contaminated product. Just metres from the fenced-off parklands, these other gardens near the Roselle interchange remain open. More than a month before asbestos was first detected over the road, an auditor handed a report on this separate City West Link site to the contractor John Holland CPB. While finding no evidence of mulch contamination, he warned some of the testing was non-compliant. There should have been one sample for every 250 cubic metres, but the testing only achieved one for every 750. The mulch in question came from this massive waste and recycling facility in Eastern Creek, owned by Bingo Industries, in May 2021. Bingo's told the ABC it provided a clean product and that no issues were identified by the contractor who sampled it. A few weeks later, EPA investigators found uncovered asbestos in the landfill section of Bingo's site, but the company says it came nowhere near the mulch, which was produced in a different area. Depending on its intended use, the testing of mulch for asbestos can fall into a special category with no specific methodology. It's very clear that there are gaping holes in regulation. There is reform necessary. The site had another mulch supplier, Green Life Resource Recovery, the company at the centre of the EPA's asbestos investigation. Its mulch was tested before delivery and the auditor was satisfied there was no contamination. But a different stockpile of the company's mulch that's now being dug up here at the Parklands was also tested. And after reviewing the data, auditors gave it the green light too. 27 samples were collected at the company's Brinjelli facility. They were all found to be contaminant free. Greens MP and environmental lawyer Sue Higginson says there's too much reliance on private contractors approving each other's work self-regulation and just the goodwill of people being diligent along the supply chain. The EPA does need to have a stronger role. Um, there needs to be much more random auditing, random testing. But how do we stop asbestos getting into recycled products in the first place? One proposal that's often floated is reducing the levies people have to pay to dispose of waste in landfill. Asbestos contaminated waste can't be recycled, so disposing of it properly can be an expensive exercise. The system itself provides an incentive for people to cheat on it, which means that you have to have a commensurate level of regulatory activity to make sure they're not cheating. Barry Buffier is a former head of the EPA, and until 2021, he was on the board of Bingo Industries. He thinks reducing the levies would just mean more material going into landfill. So there's a very substantial levy in New South Wales, the waste levy, to encourage people to recycle and not to dispose of it to landfill. So the more product you can get into recycling, the better. Barry Buffier also thinks the EPA is doing a good job given the unprecedented scale of its investigation, but he thinks the relative risks to the community should be better communicated. If everyone says, well, we're not going to take mulch anymore, we're sick of it, uh, where's it going to go? It's all going to go to landfill. Yeah, That's got a very substantial cost for the community, very substantial carbon footprint. So, you know, one piece of bonded asbestos in a thousand tonnes of mulch is, you know, a really, really, really low level of risk. 